Hi, my name is Dr. John Viard, and I want to talk to you today about a very special study called Rastayana. It's one of the eight branches of Ayurveda, and it's the study of longevity, the study of rejuvenation, the study of how to make this body live a really long time and be healthy along the way. The word Rasayana, Rasa Ayana. Rasa means lymph, and Ayana means the special study of. So what's interesting is that this study of longevity is really the study of our lymphatic fluid. And we always think of lymph as the drains of the body. But the interesting thing is that from the Ayurvedic perspective, the lymph starts being produced at the very, very first scent or sight of a food that you might particularly like. When you come home and you smell the brownies in the oven and you, and you start to feel happy, you're beginning to produce a nutrient fluid called lymph. Interesting thing in, Ayur, in Ayurveda and Sanskrit, any word that has multiple meanings is a very, very important word. Well, the word rasa, not only does it mean lymph, but it means uh, emotion, it means the taste, the taste of the food, it means water, it means nutrient fluid, it means love, it means melody, it has many, many meanings. But the most important meaning of rasa is the lymph and the taste and the emotion. Point being is that when you taste a food, you're actually eliciting an emotional response. In fact, when we smell the food, our five senses, our avenues of consciousness are facilitating a mental kind of digestive response to prepare and begin to start digesting that food, which causes the very beginning production of rasa, the nutrient fluid, the beginning of this journey of the rasa datu. Very interestingly is the rasa from that first smell of the brownie, that first nutri nutritional fluid actually goes through a journey of transforming itself again and again and again into different tissues of the body that takes literally 30 days to be produced. So when we smell that food, it's very important that the emotional charge that we put into that food happens right then and there. So the taste of the food provides an emotional charge to that food because the taste is means or is, is called rasa. The emotion is called rasa. The lymph is called rasa. The, the food that as it moves through your body is called ahara rasa. It's a very important fluid that it goes all the way through the digestive process. My point today is that that two points really. One, I want to take this journey, this 30-day journey with you. It might take a little longer than I have for this video, but I also want to make the point that, that the first emotional charge is when the quality of your, your awareness, your state of calm while you're eating the food. If you're eating the food in a panic and in a rush and you're gobbling the food down, you're not going to create this emotional state of calm that allows the rasa to be produced in a complete fashion. And if the rasa is not being produced in a complete fashion, energetically charged with stress, it's going to go into your ahara rasa, the food as it goes through your digestive tract, and it's going to impact the microbes, which we now know are directly related or affected by your stress. When you're under stress, good bugs go south, bad bugs go north. We know if you take the poop out of a very anxious mouse and put it into a calm mouse, the calm mouse gets anxious. We know that 95% of the serotonin in the body that's produced and stored and manufactured in your intestinal tract, and only 5% is in our brain. So we know for sure that we really process our stress through the intestinal tract. And the emotional charge of the food while you eat it directly impacts the ability for the microbes to support healthy production, and therefore a good mood. Literally, sounds crazy, I know, but the emotional effect while you're eating the food, according to Ayurveda, critically relates to production of the rasa, which goes on this 30-day journey to make your whole body function, which is really interesting. Now, we know from a scientific point of view that when you're under stress, your good bugs go south. We know that for a fact. So Ayurveda was very close to describing what we now know today thousands of years ago. I think it's very interesting. So 
Point number one, when you eat your food, taste your food. In Ayurveda, there's six tastes, sweet, sour, salt, pungent, bitter, and astringent. All six of those have a different and unique emotional effect. So when you taste something sweet, it provides satisfaction. If you overdo the sweet, it provides sort of a complacency. If you take uh, sour food, it provides the ability for us to, deter, to, dis, to discern and evaluate what's going on. That sour kind of focus provi it provides. If you have excess sour food, it can create jealousy. If you have salty food, it can create, salt is a, is a powerful stimulant. It creates desire and the zest for life. But if you have too much salt, it can create uh, over desire, a hedonistic lifestyle, too much material uh, possessions. It, pungent is a taste that provides stimulation as well, excitement and extroversion. If you have too much of the pungent food, it can make you angry and irritable. Um, bitter foods are, uh, are very bitter and they provide uh, energy and stimulation and the, 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 the movement for change, that bitter sort of activation. But if you have too much bitter, it can make you hyper or it can make you manic. It even can make you bitter because it can be too much of that same taste. Astringent foods, the last food, is uh, uh, the one like taking beans or, or a pickle or a cucumber. It's very astringent and uh, it causes introspection. Also a certain level of mental clarity from the astringent foods. But if you have, again, too much of those foods, it can cause you to be overly sensitive and then withdraw and retreat. I, Ayurvedically, we always say that all six tastes should be there with every meal. It's not always possible, and it's not that critically important for every meal. But if you have a long-term accumulation of lack of one taste or too much of another, it can begin to skew the emotional charge of the food that you're tearing into the ahara rasa, into the intestinal tract that are supporting the bugs that make the neurotransmitters that make you happy or sad. It's really that simple. And support the heavy lifting for your immune system and pretty much the health of our entire body is directly related to the bugs who are critically affected by our stress. It's pretty fascinating. The rasa, when it gets absorbed out of your intestinal tract, it becomes blood. It manufactures the production or supports the production of blood. And then it becomes muscle. Then it becomes fat. Then it becomes bone and nerve and reproductive tissue. Now that process there's way more detail than I have uh, time for today, but it's a long journey. I write about it in the article, and I'm going to write more about this process because it's quite fascinating. But it takes 30 days for that to happen. And the final product is reproductive tissue. And the essence of that final product, the final product, after we produce all these seven tissues, reproductive tissue being the final, most creative, obviously, tissue, there's a tissue called ogest, which is called longevity fluid, you could call it. It's the final <clears throat> manifestation of the rasa, of the lymph. It's called vitality fluid, energizing fluid, longevity fluid. It provides a glow and a radiance in your skin and your body. It makes you happy. It makes you satisfied. It's actually stored and reserved in your heart, and it's called the physiological expression of consciousness. It's the body's final refinement of digestion to provide something that's physical that holds on to our spiritual process, our, our, our ability to support consciousness and have a, a more uh, subtle energy experience of life, a spiritual experience of life rather than just a physical. In fact, from the Ayurvedic perspective, this journey that rasa takes is the most important journey. And if you make good rasa, and, you, and it's done with good emotion, and it's been supported along the way with good quality, not excessive behavior or stressful behavior, and you produce all the tissues balanced in a balanced fashion, and you produce ogis, the more ogis you produce, simply put, the longer you live, the healthier you are, and the more of a spiritual process in a life you can enjoy. Fascinating subject, really, when you look at what Ayurveda understood with regard to the very finest aspects of digestion. But again, it's all about lymph in Ayurveda, so please take a look at this article that I've written about this. It's very compelling, I think very interesting. I think you'll like it. 
And uh, please tune in for more about this fascinating subject of the finest and most subtle aspects of Ayurvedic digestion. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Villard.